What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna to take a quick look, well, Lance quick look, at the Option Ohm Legome Mini. Now before continuing, I'd like to ask, take a couple seconds, hit the, hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit the whatever the other stuff they hit is, would really help. There's still a hefty majority of you all that are not subscribed, uh, and I would really enjoy it if you did. It really helps me uh, get more brand awareness for brand deals, things like that. Anyway, I appreciate it, and let's continue with the video. So this is the new, uh, new-ish, um, small electronic grinder from Option O. They're the people that make the P64 that James Hoffman did a review on, uh, the P100, which is a 98 millimeter burr grinder. They do the, the hand grinder called the Remy, um, they're a really well-known, reputable company making fantastic, high-quality grinders. This one is a small, I think it's the smallest electronic grinder on the market um, that honestly is kind of like an electronic hand grinder in a way. You have two burr set options with it. You can get 38 millimeter TIN coated um, burrs, or you can get what I chose, which are 48 millimeter obsidian burrs. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this off so you can kind of see what that is. But uh, it's very easy to take off. You have these nice thin threads that allow for a stepless uh, dialing in. You just simply take this top bar off. Let me just pop. There's the bearing. Oh no, there we go. So here is the collar right here, right there. And then you have the 48 millimeter obsidian bird. All right. So, and all you have to do to put it back together is you have three springs right here. Boom, boom, boom. You align it with these three phalanges and there is one orientation for it. Wherever you put it in, if you put, go down and it doesn't bounce, you're gonna wanna take it back out. So we're gonna put that bearing back on and we're gonna screw this back on. All right. So, you're just gonna twist. You can go all the way to lock. I'll show you where lock is, where the burrs are literally locked. So we're gonna go past, we're just gonna keep screwing it until we can't screw anymore. So right there, we're locked, the birds are locked together. At, it looks at uh, between two and a half and three. Then we're gonna go back and this is where our zero begins. So espresso is around this range. I've, I've been brewing espresso around negative, I'm gonna say it's negative eight and a half up to around 0.5 or so, depending on the style of espresso. And then I'm starting pour overs around three, three and a half, four, maybe up higher, depending on the style of coffee I'm going for. But it's a stepless dialing. It's uh, really smooth. As you see, it just, it's very smooth. Um, yeah, they put this inside it. It's a little, it seems like a little 3D printed piece that keeps you safe from sticking your finger in and getting it chopped off from the cone. So you put this right here, and that way, whoop, that way you can't be dumb. You can't be me and chop your finger off. Actually, my brother did chop the front of his finger off. It's kind of gross. Um, anyway, and you have a lid. Now, the catch cup on it, I really, really, really love. It, the bottom of it is magnetic, and so it just puts on here. As you just noticed, so one of my pet peeves, which is also a positive, so I'm torn on it, is putting it in. A lot of times you get caught on the nose like this, which is kind of frustrating, but you want it that close so that grounds don't go flying if there's any static or anything like that. So it's a really tight tolerance right there. So when you put it there, you, you have barely any movement. So all you gotta do is kind of scoop it, right? So if you try to go straight in, you might end up like this. Just scoop it, and it has the magnet on the bottom. Now, to prove the magnet's on the bottom, because you may be wondering, there you go. Magnet is on the bottom, that's probably not good for the scale, I don't know but I'm, I'm going with it. All right, so we have that there. The top is also a magnet. You can see the little magnets here around the lip. Put it on there, good to go. All right, and then the motor in it is actually a direct, a DC, okay? Which is actually kind of unique. I don't see a ton of grinders that are DC. Now what that means is, I know a lot of people have been asking me, can you do the um, speed router controller on it? No, because that is for AC motors, all right? This is DC, so those will not work. That being said, there is a way to control the speed of that, uh, of that motor, and it is with one of these boxes. I can't tell you where to get it. I got this from um, Scope, 
out of Australia. This was their original prototype for the variable RPM on the Commandante grinder. I mean, the Commandante motor, which I have a video of right here that you can check out. But I have been able to successfully control the RPM. Whoops. There we go. So let's show it from on top. All right, so I'm not saying that you need to do variable RPM, but it does seem, and I have not found this information, I haven't been able to, to locate it. I'm not sure what the RPM of this grinder is. I'm assuming it's around 300. I'm mostly doing that based off of uh, visuals. So looking at how fast the burr is spinning on the niche, which goes at 330, and looking at how fast the burr is spinning on my motor here, which has the Commandante going at 180 um, at full speed. So I'm guessing it's around 300. Um, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, let's continue. Let's get straight to uh, the point. Before I do some tests, which I'm going to have uh, um, down below the time cues, before I do tests, I'm going to go ahead and give you my thoughts on this because a lot of people want me to cut to the point, so we're going to cut to the point. I think uh, out of the box at 350 or however much this is with the 48 millimeter obsidian burrs, I'm not reviewing the 38 millimeter burrs because I didn't really see a point in getting them. They're brew only, you can't do espresso on them. And supposedly this is even better for, uh, for filter according to the optional people on their website. So um, I only got the 48 millimeter obsidian, which is uh, about, uh, I think it's a $50 upgrade. But I put this to the test a lot at home, did a lot of blind testings, uh, which you're gonna see some today, but testings, that's weird. Um, but this out of the box is by far your best budget grinder in existence for both filter and espresso. Is it better than the Ode with SSPs? No. Is it better than, um, you know, I don't know, for an espresso? I haven't done an in-game espresso, but is it better than other comparable price espresso-specific grinders? Maybe like uh, um, a Eureka Specialita? Probably not, but maybe. I haven't tested those side by side. Uh, but for all around, out of the box, not having to do anything to it, this is such an incredible value. It's kind of mind-blowing that no one has done this yet. Um, I pitted it against the motorized C40, and from at my home tests, the C40 did marginally beat it. I consistently chose that cup out of the triangulations I performed. And then with the, the niche grinder, when I did espresso, they almost tied every time. They were very, very close. I'm going to do that live today, though, to do another round, and you can see exactly how my brain works on that. But I think this is a fantastic grinder. It's budget friendly. It can do a lot of things. Just know that if you're doing espresso on it, it's not a heavy duty. Uh, it doesn't have the capability of doing heavy duty espresso, meaning you cannot do more than like two or three shots a day consistently. And I also want to point out that I have experienced uh, stalling with lighter roasted coffees when doing espresso, even when I have the burrs running first. And we'll see, it might do it again today on camera. Anyway, for those of you who want me to just get to the point, there you go, but we're gonna go ahead and get into the testing now where we're gonna pit stuff together. So what I'm gonna do now is I have two Kono brewers. I'm gonna brew two cups at 12 grams to 200 grams of water of a washed Kenya from George Howell. I'm gonna brew two cups uh, uh, exactly the same. We're gonna read their measurements. I'll show you the, grind, the grounds so you can see they're roughly the same size. I'll report to you the times, the TDSs, extractions, so that you have an idea of how tight these are together. And then we'll do a little triangulation. I've got some cupping bowls, cupping spoon, and I'll put two, two and one in each one. So two of the Commandante, one of the Optiono, two of the Optiono, one of the Commandante. Do a little test, do two triangulations, and uh, we'll see if I'll, I'll be able to choose the odd one out. Um, Anyway, when I clap, we'll have that done. All right, so I just finished brewing them both on the Kono, and the, um, the option O took 15 seconds less time to finish draining at the same grind size. I've dialed them in using my little brewler, the Kruv brewler. So obviously it's not perfect, but I was able to get them both down to what optically looked very similar. Um, and I've been doing this at home. I've been doing... Um, Comparisons with same TDS, comparisons with same drawdown times, comparisons with same grind size, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, anyway, let's go ahead and take the TDS of these, see what we're up against. These were 15, they're 15 seconds apart. All right, so the weight of the Commandante, I did 12 to 200 grams, by the way. The weight of the Commandante is 171.8, and the weight of the option O, is 1, 
actually, so this one's 172. It just switched up to 172. And this one we have at 172.7. All right, so let's turn these off. So now I'm going to take the refraction of both of these, and we're going to calculate what the extraction is, and um, so that you have a, a, an idea of what these extracted at, and then we'll do the triangulation. All right, so I just refracted both of them. The Commandante extracted at a 1.51 TDS, whereas the Optiono at a 1.56, which is interesting since this one extracted 15 seconds more quickly. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is I have three cupping bowls where I put black circles on the bottom. And all of them are the same cupping bowls, no difference. And then three without anything on the bottom. Okay, uh, what's going to happen next is Jason, my camera guy, is going to come over. He's going to pour this into these three, which are the option O, which have the blacked out part, and then the three commandantes into these three bowls, and then he'll simply switch one of them, and then he's going to randomize the three, and I'm not going to be able to see that, uh, and then I'll come taste them and see if I can tell which is which. All right, so I'm going to turn around, and I'm going to let him do it. I'm not going to listen to anything. My ears are plugged, and I am talking, and I am talking, and I'm pick a little, tuck a little, pick a little, tuck a little, cheep, 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 tuck a little, pick a little, pick a little, tuck a little, pick a little, tuck a little, cheep, 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 tuck a little, pick a little. I really cannot hear anything. And I'm, if he's done, I might need a tap on the shoulder because I am very much... Still pouring, still pouring. I think I heard something. You say good? Still pouring. Oh, still pouring. Oh, still pouring. All right, so we're going to keep going like this. And I'm going to sing my coffee song. Make a cup of coffee today. Going to make me feel so great. Going to give me an AJ so I can make coffee all throughout the day. Make a cup of coffee today. It'll be our own coffee date. It'll make be just you and me. So okay. grab some, right. some gra grind some coffee and brew some. Okay, so here we go. All right, I'm gonna put these decanters away. I have two sets of three. Move the scales. Get these closer to me. Do 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 do. Armed with my cupping spoon only. Get in the power stance, and here we go. Hmm. I'm gonna go through and sip now. This one's rough. Great. This is gonna be embarrassing. Anyway, we're gonna about to find out. I'm kind of, I'm worried. So that's the C40. That's option O, that's C40, all right, that's C40, that's option O, <laughs> and that's option O. So I got those way wrong, um, so there you go. Very similar even though they were extracted slightly differently. Now we're going to move on to doing espresso and we're going to run the option O versus the niche. But before moving on, I do want to point out that the burr set in the option O looks like this, all right. So look at that, and now I'm gonna put right here the burr set from the K Plus, the K series of the EZ Presso. And now from the Commandante, I'm gonna put it right down here. So as you see, they're very similar burr geometries going on. So we're able to get similar things going on. Now, my, whenever I'm tasting these coffees, knowing what they are, and I've chosen the C40 uh, blindly and knowing what they are, I think the reason perhaps if I were to speculate why I prefer the C40 with this motor is potentially because it has a lower RPM. I don't know. If you're asking if I've seasoned this, yes, I put about 15 to 20 pounds of coffee through it over the last three weeks since I've had it slowly because I didn't want to burn it up. But um, so it is a seasoned burp, burp set if you're wondering. I put a lot of coffee through my C40 as well. But um, anyway, but they're close enough that obviously on camera I was all jumbled up and was just making wild guesses. So uh, hopefully that is helpful as to whether you think this is uh, as good as the C40. I definitely think it's very close, if not as good as, and it could have just been a certain day I was either on fire with my palate or I was guessing really, really well. I'm just going to be cleaning up now and we'll probably sip on this delicious coffee the rest of the episode because it was very good. And let's see if I have just enough for one bowl and ha-ha. All right, so I'm about to pull some espresso. I started grinding with the uh, option O, and something I wanted to point out is I have found, even with medium to light roasts, that when you're grinding really finely, uh, the grinder can stall. And so I have a little footage of that right here. So as you can see, it starts grinding, but then it stalls. Um, and I'm not even that finely uh, grinding this coffee. I'm only pulling a traditional nine bar shot. 
So this is, I'm pulling 18 in, 45 out in around 25 to 30 seconds, and it's, it's stalling. So that is an issue, you need to slow feed it in. If you just dump it all in, you will have an issue. I always start the, the grinding mechanism before I put the beans in, in order to stop it from any of that stalling that can happen because of the weak motor. Uh, when you have something that small, obviously, you're gonna have a pretty weak motor. So wanted to point that out. Uh, let's continue going though. All right, so I just pulled the two shots and here they are. Now, obviously this one's been sitting a little bit longer. This was the first one I pulled, which is the option O, and this one's with the niche. Now, I pulled them both identically. I did 18 in, 45 out. The option O took 31 seconds. The niche took right, it hit just 32 right when I stopped it. So pretty much identical shots. Um, I dialed them both in. They have similar profiles. And so I'm just keeping them as, as, as identical as possible. Um, what I'm gonna do, because there are two different uh, temperatures as I have a thermometer with me. I'm gonna stir with dedicated spoons the niche quite a bit until they match in temp and until I can get the crema looking similar. And then I'm gonna have Jason switch these up for me and we will see if there's one that I highly prefer over the other. Now I'm not making my decision based off of this and the same with the, the uh, cupping earlier. I wanna make that clear, I do a lot of work testing prior to filming. Uh, multiple hours and in fact I have three videos of me tasting uh, that are over an hour long each where I just filmed myself during some of these uh, some of these times where I'm going through and tasting it and so if you're curious on what I'm doing I will link those below so yes don't take this as the end all be all for whatever conclusion I come to I do a lot of testing outside of the videos obviously all right, I got them both down to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Jason's gonna swap them up and then we'll taste. And here we go. I don't wanna know where they are, so I'm not gonna look. Oh, oh, yeah. I hope he remembers where each of them go. I'm gonna take my fingers out of my ears. Okay. All right, let's see. All right, here we go. Take a little sip. It's nice, it's definitely uh, got that developed sugared sweetness to it. So it's like graham cracker, um, honeycomb. Um, the citrusy bit of this coffee that I know to be there, it's a washed Colombian that has a pretty nice citrus note to it. It's not as prevalent in this. I would expect some like orange zest. And maybe there's a little bit coming up as it sits on my tongue, but it's not a lot. All right, let's see. This one has a more predominant acidity. The finish is not good though. Has a very, um, I guess like uh, like a strained finish, if that makes sense. So it's um, it's kind of astringent as opposed to this one. This one, it, it, off first sip, is more balanced. But we're gonna now. I'm gonna taste it once more. So this one has like orange rind, that bitterness of like a rind, okay? But it does have a higher acidity, but it's, it's kind of flat in the sense that there's not, there's not that deep sweetness holding it up into place. It's kind of, uh, I don't know, it's kind of myopic in its flavor profile. It's, 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 it's not a tart acidity that you would get maybe from a flatbread grinder um, or from like a really lightly roasted coffee that's kind of sour if it's under extracted. This doesn't taste under extracted. It just tastes kind of hollow. Whereas this one is, uh, Taste it again. This one's more like, if you were to like, like a brulee orange, similar to the brulee grapefruit. It's much more rounded, got burnt sugar, uh, and like that graham cracker. This is a very balanced cup. This one just seems kind of, kind of hollow. So between these, which honestly this is not this, uh, between these right here, I'm saying this one's the better one. Um, and honestly, I'm very torn as to which is which. I, because in my testing, they were a lot closer than these two shots. Uh, but to be honest with you, this was the, the, the this was a very, this, these were two very good shots. Um, so I'm gonna guess because I did end up preferring the, um, let's see, I don't know how to guess. I'm gonna guess just because I want it to be the cheaper grinder, I'm gonna guess this one's option O and this one's niche. Correct. <gasps> Correct. So this one I thought was better. Um, now to, to appease everyone, what I'm gonna do, because this one did seem like it could arguably under strike, I'm gonna do one more uh, shot test, just to be fair. And I'm going to 
tweak the grind just a little bit to ensure that I have a little bit more fuller extraction on the niche to give it a little more of a fair chance. And I'll do just one more real fast because I will say this was a much bigger difference than the testing I had um, on those videos that I have posted below. So let's do one more blind testing and I'll have Jason switching them right now. And round two, let's go. I don't know why I'm even closing my ears because it, I can't, I guess I can't really hear if the something's being all right, I'm gonna do this quickly. So I was not anticipating doing it twice. Ooh, Ralph bat. This one tastes a lot more juicy, but. All right, so these shots are much closer than the other round. This one's much more difficult to choose one I prefer, actually. I'm choosing this as my preferred, so I'm gonna say that's option O, that's niche. Okay. Correct. So, um, both times I did choose option O. Again, uh, that was more representative of um, the testing I did at home, that it was a lot closer. But every now and then the niche would eke forward or the option O would, but as you see here, both times I chose um, option O. Granted, that doesn't, that doesn't negate the fact that you could absolutely dial in the niche for something that it's better at than the option O. But yeah, so it's interesting um, that you can get something that, is, that rivals the quality of the shots that the niche produces in something so small, but keep in mind, yet again, this can only do two to three shots a day safely, whereas this is a workhorse. So keep that in mind. And then of course, you can also, if you have a C40 and you're wondering if this is gonna be a step up in filter, I would argue no, it's not a step up unless you want something motorized that can occasionally do espresso without you having to hand crank it with a Commandante. Now, the final thing I wanna talk about is retention. I have found the need to still use bellows. I swear by this bellows. This is not even made for coffee at all. This was like an insect blower or something that, um, I'll, in fact, I'll link it below uh, from Amazon. But this fits on like everything, even the niche from the side view. Watch this. I'll be able to get more coffee out of the niche, which is uh, quote unquote zero attention. Are you ready for this? Look at all that. All right, now out of the option O which does an incredible job, don't get me wrong. Okay, you ready? So there was some that came out, not a ton. Uh, so it actually does a really good job at, uh, at no retention. But uh, I still, still get about five hundredths to a tenth of a gram every now and then. Um, that is kind of my overview. Uh, I think it's a great grinder, it's very quiet. One more time, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. And with beans in it, just real quick, so you can hear it. I don't want to, come on. One more time so you can hear it with beans in it. Let's get it coarser so it doesn't stall. All right, so it's very quiet. Just a hum. It takes, it takes a decent amount of time, about 25, 30 seconds for an 18 gram dose for like a V60. It takes around a minute um, where you do have to just trinkle the beans in if you're doing medium light or even lighter coffees that are higher density. I've had it stall many times while filming it stalled a few times. Um, and it can get messy if you're see, if you're just trickling the beans in. Even with this cover in it, it can get quite messy. You drop the beans in, they kind of want to fly out. So I have I've got big particles of coffee on the table. So it is it can be kind of a pain. I'm trying to find a slow feeder for this, something you can put on top and slowly feed the beans into it, so you don't have to sit there and trickle it in. And I, I ended up having to do this. I'll show you my trick if you end up getting it and want to espresso. I put my hand like this and I was just trickling them in this way so that when the grounds, even with this, decide to try to pop out, I was able to keep them in um, from that popcorning effect. Anyway, um, I hope this was helpful. I hope it was you know, exhaustive enough that it gave you all the information you needed, but not too redundant. Um, but we all know I'm quite verbose, so that's uh, likely to happen. Anyway, again, if you made it this far, you're a real one. Uh, comment below if you've made it this far. Um, I'm a real one and I'm gonna shower you with love because I super appreciate you. That means the world to me. You know, again, hit the like, the subscribe, the notifications, you know, leave comments, whatever it is. Um, and check out my Patreon. That's where I have, uh, that's where I was doing the live stream. If you watch my recordings on me tasting, that's who I was talking to in those videos. I was doing that live with my Discord, uh, my Discord peeps that's accessible through Patreon. All right, that is the option O Lego Mini. 
fantastic grinder out of the box, arguably the best grinder you can get for under 500 bucks that all encapsulates everything that you don't have to do any modifications for, with the exception of slow feeding for espresso, but really you should be doing this for mainly filter anyway, uh, because it's not really built to do heavy espresso. And only for the 48 millimeter burrs, reiteration there. 38's only filter, I did not review that today because I didn't see a point. Anyway, that is everything. I did pay for this, it was not free, so get that out of your mind, and I hope you brew something tasty. Cheers.